quick. Yeah, and that's exactly why I didn't speak up quickly because my first so, yeah. reaction was NG Cirrus, and then I saw the car and I thought, what on earth? Oh, nice little squid. Starfish got him. Oh. oh. But. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. No, <laughs> no way. Uh, oh, buddy. <laughs> Wow. Well, this can, this can go with the gruesome fish shrimp video. Wild kingdom here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I can't even go have a glass of water. Did that really happen? Did that really happen? <laughs> uh, what, what happened to it now? That's remarkable. So we were saying earlier that the brittle stars are scavengers and they can pretty much feed on whatever they can get, but I never expected to see it grab a, I'm not sure if that was a cuttlefish or a squid, out of the water column. Wow. I was thinking these are the kinds of behaviors that you would never see in a textbook that what you know these guys feed on are squid and it really takes getting down there and watching these organisms to see these kinds of interactions are extremely surprising yeah he was so fast when he reached out to grab it, it was yeah. yeah so the question was i'm trying to remember now was the arm up already and it just intersected the arm or could he somehow sense I don't, know. It was moving I, don't, I don't know. We'll have to have the replay for that. Yeah. But. Come on out. Yeah, it's Max. Uh, I have a cross current on me, so it's hmm. very hard. To so is that a brittle star or a brutal star? Yeah. <laughs> that was a brutal, brutal star. All right, come back in. By the way, I don't recognize that species of brittle star. Have you seen that before uh, anywhere else, Scott, except for this dive? No, and I was saying earlier that, you know, I really haven't worked in this relatively shallow depth range um, very much. And so a lot of the fauna are quite different to me. And this looks like it'd be something we would recognize. I mean, the color pattern on there, oh, it looks like his uh, buddy is saying, hey, let's uh, share that. <laughs> That's not so fast, but friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, huh, wow. I got a fight over it. I mean, this is not something you see every day. Uh, no, no. Or in my entire career. I'm still rooting for the cuttlefish. <laughs> By its move was just put in, but so do we have any yeah, idea what the metabolism error is? How often would he have to catch something like this to sustain itself, Scott? Uh, that's a good question. So the metabolism is really quite low in the, the typical deep sea. Uh, we're up now over eight degrees Celsius, so it's pretty warm here. Um, but many of these things, you know, they're almost sitting like predators, not moving around too much. Uh, he just let his friend take it from him, yeah. Yep. So. Well, maybe he got a tentacle or something. Um, I have seen, or I, I know of some studies that have been done, for example, on deep water amphipods where they can have a full meal and then they essentially can park themselves in the sediments for six months wow. and then they feed again. And, you know, it's kind of like there's some snakes that will take a big meal and right. a long time before they feed again. So I would imagine, I mean, here it looks like there's a lot of food. So I think you could be feeding quite often. But when you're in a real Sorry, deep sea, if time? something like that came along, you could take advantage of it, and that's going to sate you for a long period of time. So you're upset. Sorry, Sean. All right, let's come out. Well, that was a really fortuitous observation for us. <laughs> <laughs> 